Hey everyone, welcome to the Tailwind Variance Crash Course. It is a library that allows you to create variants using Tailwind CSS. But what are variants? Let me give you an example from NextUI, which is a UI framework for React. So suppose you want to have a button component, a reusable button component. Then button component can have many different styles. You want to change that by using some kind of arguments or React props. So it can have style like a background color or a transparent background with a border color or maybe a button that actually looks like a link. These are actually called variants. And the variants can be anything. For example, you can have size variant where you have different size of button or different amount of radius or different colors and so on. I hope you get the point. And creating all these different kind of variants can be a little bit tricky or complicated, but Tailwind Variants makes it very, very simple for you. This library is really feature rich. It's packed with features like slot, responsive variants, compound variants, and so on. It has full TypeScript support. And most importantly, it is framework agnostic which means that it's not just for a single framework like React or Angular or Solid. You can use it with any framework or even use it with vanilla JavaScript. And this library is also built by the same team that built NextUI. And by the way, I have a full crash course on NextUI. If you are interested, I will put the link on the description. It's a pretty good UI framework if you are into Tailwind CSS. But this video is not about NextUI, it is about Tailwind Variants. I'm going to try to keep the video very simple so that you understand. So I've talked enough, but before we get started, consider a like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me a lot. And without further ado, let's get started. For this video, I'm going to use this library with Next.js. And I have already created a Next.js project. Make sure you have selected Tailwind CSS during the installation. And after the installation, you need to install another package, which is called Tailwind Variants. And then I have just removed all the boilerplate code from the Next.js project. So let's first see the basic use case. Let's create a button first, and then we will add variants to it. Now we need to import a function called TB, which stands for Tailwind Variants. And inside the function, you need to pass arguments and the argument is going to be an object. So inside the object, first you can specify the base styles or you can say some default styles for the button. And these are the class names that I want to add as a base style. And this class names has to be tailwind class names. And this TV function will actually return you a function. So let's say get variance. And let's call the get variance function. This will actually return you a string, which is the class name. So let's get that. Add it to button. And now we have some styles. If I inspect, we have this button with all these class names that I have added as a base style. But this is actually base style. But how do we add actually variants? So if I show you the documentation, let's go to documentation, then uh, variants. So in the TB function, we have passed the base key, and then you need to pass the variance key. And the variance key will be another object. And inside this variance, you need to specify the variant types. And the variance type is actually depends on you. For example, you want to have a color variant, you can add a color object. If you want to have a spacing variant, you add a spacing variant and so on. And inside those variant type objects, you need to specify another key, which is going to be the variant name. And the value will be a string, which is going to be a list of Tailwind class names. So let's add our own variance. So let's go to the TV function. Let's add the variance object. And now we need to specify the variant type. Let's say color. And now the keys are going to be the variant name. 
for example, primary. And you can add as much variance as you want. So I will paste more. But you see no variance styles are added to our button. To add that, you need to use this get variance function, which is returned from the TV function. And here you need to pass an object and it is giving me auto completion. And in the auto completion, you see the color, which is the variant type we have specified and the values and the values are actually the variant names that we have specified, which is really nice. So let's say I want to add primary. And now the primary starts untouched. Let's say I want to add a secondary color. Now it's a secondary color or maybe success. Now let's add more variants. I will add size variant. Now let's say that I want to have success variant as color and LG variant as size. And let's add another key here. Let's add size. And it is also again giving me auto completion. Let's add LG. And now we have a bigger button size. And you also notice for the double XL variant, we are passing an array. This will also work. You can pass a single string or you can pass an array of tailings class name string. And another thing, you will see that if I hit space, it is giving me auto completion for tailwind class names. It will not work by default. You need to tweak the tailwind CSS extension on VS Code or the tailwind CSS language server on NeoVim and they have the documentation for it. Uh, where is that? Go to getting started and go to IntelliSense setup. Here you see the VS Code, NeoVim and IntelliJ options. Then you also have prettier plugin support. Now let's add a different kind of variant, a Boolean variant. For example, you want to have a disabled state of a button. So you can add that really easy. So let's pass key disabled. And the key name is going to be the true or false. So let's say true. And these are going to be the class name, opacity of 50 and no pointer events. And let's add disabled key in the get variance function and pass true. And our button is now disabled. You can even add default variance. So outside the variance, let's add another key default variance. Let's say that for color, I want primary. And size, I want MD. And if I comment everything on here, now we have primary color and MD size. And if I disable these two again, and now we don't have any variance. Now let's talk about compound variance. So let's go to variance, compound variance. So what is a compound variant? Compound variants are some style when multiple variants are applied. For example, a success variant is applied to the button, but also the disabled variant is applied to the button. If both success and the disabled variant are applied, then you want to add some more styles. In that case, you can use this compound variance. You can use this class or class name key to add more tailwind class names. So let's see that in example. So let's add a compound variant. It's going to be an array, array of objects. So let's say that I want color to be success. And the disabled is true. Then I can add more class name. You can use class or class name, both of them is spy. I want this stats. I want to change the background color shade and the text color shade. And now you can see that the stats has been changed, even though I didn't change anything on this get variance function. If I make disabled to false by just commenting out, now you see this compound variant is not applied. So I hope you, so I hope you get the point you can add as many compound variants as you want. Now let's talk about responsive variants. So let's go to responsive variants. So what is responsive variant? Basically, you can add 
specific variant on specific breakpoints. You see that we have one specific style. If I shrink this, now the style changes as I change the size. So let's see how to use this. But before that, you need to follow a simple step. So let's go to this step. You need to add this to your Tailwind config. So copy this. And Tailwind config. And I'll paste that here. And let's create a config object. And let's call that with TV function and pass the config object. That should be it. So go to the page.js file and inside the TV function, we have passed an object which is getting really nested. But for responsive variance, you need to add that as a second argument, which is going to be another object. And here you need to specify responsive variance and you can pass an array of big point names you can also pass true if you want to apply the responsive variance and all the school size so with this array of breakpoint names you can now add variance for this specific breakpoints in the get variance function for the variant name we have passed string but you can also pass an object so i will remove success and you can pass an initial uh, value. And initially you want primary. I will uh, make disabled to false. So initial variant and uh, this default variant is kind of similar. For responsive variants to work, you need to either pass a default variant or an initial variant. And then you can specify variant for other breakpoint like LG. I want secondary. And for MD, I want success. So let's see if that works or not. I will change the screen size. As you can see, the styles are changing. And in the class name, you see this breakpoint class names from Tailwind. So that's how you can add responsive variants. Now let's talk about slots. So slots are basically multiple elements of a single component. So for example, this card, this is actually a card component, but the card component is actually consists of many elements like this image, this uh, text, then this name text, then this uh, profession text and so on. And you want to style them individually. So let's see how to use it. So I'm going to create a new page card. Then page.tsx. Let's create a new component. So let's call the name the TV function. Pass an object. And now you can specify slots. And as slot, I want a base slot, which will be the container. Then I want a heading slot and a subheading slot. Again, this will return you a function called get card styles. Get card styles. Since we are using slots, it will not return us a string this time. It will return us an array of object. And the object name is going to be the slot names. Let's restructure that. So I want base, heading, and subheading. And these are actually a function that should be called in the class name prop. So we'll add some elements. So this is the container, the base. This is heading and this is the subheading. And let's go to the card crowd. So let's add some class name. PG create a 400 text white padding of 5. For heading, I want text to excel somebody i want text sl so this is our card i will close the other files i don't need them so this is how you can add individual style 
Now for this slots, you can add more variants. So if you go to slot with variants, you see this example and it's really complicated. Uh, tons of killing class names. You add variance key, then the variant type name like color, then the variant name primary. Previously, we used to add string as value for the variant names, but this time we're going to add object and the keys of that object is going to be the slot names and the values are going to be tailwind class names. So let's see how to use it. So I'll set slots, let's add variance. Let's add a color variant. Primary base color would be background red of 400. And uh, secondary base would be background blue of 400. Let's add a spacing variant. So let's add a color variant uh, to the dint card stars function. So uh, color is going to be primary or secondary and a size variant, sorry, spacing variant, let's say LG. You can even specify the variant in the class name for the slot. For example, in the space function, I can pass an object and here I can specify the color. Yeah. I will add primary. Now we're using primary. Even though we have specified here secondary, this one will have higher priority. Then you can have compound slots. Basically with compound slots, you can attach same class name to multiple slots at once. For example, you want to have some margin on both of the text the heading and the subheading you can easily do that with a compound slot actually it's compound slots and again it will be an array of objects and you can specify slots array of slot names so for heading and for subheading I want to attach class names I want to add margin to the bottom of four uh interior warp oh sorry copilot added as a one stream now it should work okay so now it's working now you can even add compound variants with slots so let's add one so when the color is primary and spacing is ND. I want to attach more class name. This time the class name can also be an object and the key name are going to be the slot name. Let's say that I want to change the font size of subheading to text LG. The text size hasn't changed because the spacing is LG. Let's change it to MD. It's still not working because the color is secondary. Let's make it primary. Now the text size has been changed. I know it's uh, I know these are pretty dummy examples, but you see that you can really customize things a lot and it can get really complex. You can add responsive uh, variants with slots, then slot variant override section. You can just read the doc. Then you have overriding stats. Basically, it means that you can pass a class name to the return function of the TV function call. Then you can override stats on a component with slots. Then you can compose components. Basically, if you have like two variants, then you can extend one variant with another using this extend prop. Then you have TypeScript config and the API reference documentation. I'm not going to go over them. So that's pretty much about this video. This library is really useful if you want to have this kind of variant styles for the components. I hope you have learned something from this video. If the video was helpful for you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter as Theron John. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.